Folk tales from around the world, read at a slower pace. A chance to improve your English listening skills. It's Slow English. This is Slow English, and now here's a story called The Cattle Plague. Chen Hua Feng of Meng Shan, overpowered by the great heat, went and lay down under a tree, when suddenly up came a man with a thick comforter round his neck, who also sat down on a stone in the shade and began fanning himself as hard as he could, the perspiration all the time running off him like a waterfall. Chen rose and said to him, with a smile, If, sir, you were to remove that comforter, you would be cool enough without the help of a fan. It would be easy enough, replied the stranger, to take off my comforter, but the difficulty would be in getting it on again. He then went on to converse generally upon other matters, in a manner which betokened considerable refinement. And by and by he exclaimed, What I should like now is just a draught of iced wine to cool the twelve joints of my esophagus. Oh, come along then, cried Chen. My house is close by, and I shall be happy to give you what you want. So off they went together, and Chen set before them some capital wine, which he produced from a cave, cold enough to numb their teeth. The stranger was delighted, and remained there drinking until late in the evening, when, all at once, it began to rain. Chen lighted a lamp, and he and his guest who now took off the comforter, sat talking together in dishabi. Every now and again, the former thought he saw a light coming from the back of the stranger's head, and when at length he had gone off into a tipsy sleep, Chen took the light to examine more closely. MI Radio, living the life you love. Now the next part. He found, behind the ears, a large cavity partitioned by a number of membranes and looking like a lattice, with a thin skin hanging down in front of each, the spaces being apparently empty. In great astonishment, Chen took a hairpin and inserted it into one of these places, when out flew something like a tiny cow, which broke through the window and was gone. This frightened Chen, and he determined to play no more tricks. Just then, however, the stranger waked up. Alas, cried he, you have been at my head and have let out the cattle plague. What is to be done now? Chen asked what he meant, upon which the stranger said, There is no object in further concealment. I will tell you all. I am the angel of pestilence for the six kinds of domestic animals. That form which you have let out attacks oxen, 
and I fear that, for miles round, few will escape alive. Now Chen himself was a cattle farmer, and when he heard this was dreadfully alarmed, and implored the stranger to tell him what to do. What to do? replied he. Why, I shall not escape punishment myself. How can I tell you what to do? However, you will find powdered kuntsan, an efficacious remedy. That is, if you don't keep it a secret, for your private use. The stranger then departed, first of all piling up a quantity of earth in a niche in the wall, a handful of which, he told Chen, given to each animal, might prove of some avail. And in a moment we'll find out what happens when the plague spreads further. MI Radio Hear it. Feel it. Love it. This is Slow English. Now, the last part of the story. Before long, the plague did break out, and Chen, who was desirous of making a little money by it, told the remedy to no one, with the exception of his younger brother, the latter tried it on his own beasts with great success, while, on the other hand, those belonging to Chen himself died off, to the number of fifty head, leaving him only four or five old cows, which showed every sign of soon sharing the same fate. In his distress, Chen suddenly bethought himself of the earth in the niche, and, as a last resource, gave some to the sick animals. By the next morning they were quite well, and then he knew that his secrecy about the remedy had caused it to have no effect. From that moment his stock went on increasing, and in a few years he had as many as ever. And that's the end of the story. You're listening to Slow English.